Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life. So today we're going to do something fun. We're going to be using Tim Holtz's Sizzix Sidekick Side Order Thinlets. And um, this is a real chicken and the egg kind of situation. I couldn't figure out what order to show you how to do these. Um, these are just stuff on my, my desktop. So, and these are from a different set. So let's get, let's get just the thinlets out here. And I was working on making some little fun tabs for my um, book. And I wanted some different colors and some different, just a little pop of color. Like all my tabs, my big tabs have um, color on them while the background is kind of, I'll show you the background of a page. Um, that's a circus page. This is okay. So there's a little bit of color on here But I really wanted to have you know little tiny pops of color here and there that I could move around and these thinlets have these really cool Okay, we better pull them over here I was trying to keep them separate because some are doubled over and some aren't doubled over so this one isn't doubled over. This is just a piece of scrapbook paper with um, a little bit of Mod Podge on the front. So if, if there wasn't even Mod Podge, it would be even lighter. And you can see it will sit there, but it, it wasn't super, like, it's just a tiny piece of paper with this little thing. So then what I did was I thought, how about if I attach two Mod Podge fronts to the back? And now I will tell you, so... There's Mod Podge on the front, this is a postage stamp, then there's Mod Podge in the middle, then there's a scrapbook paper with Mod Podge on it. And I will tell you that that is very sturdy. So this is going to be my system for this going forward. And I have a couple more shapes, so the heart does really well anyways. I'm trying to find my ones that have been doubled. There's a double and... There should be one more double. Is this, a, this is a double. Okay. So the circle also is pretty sturdy, right? Like that's a very sturdy one. And I have it, I have this, the stamp on the back again, because I wanted the red for my circus. So I used a red stamp, obviously. And then this one is kind of tiny. Um, and, and I almost feel like this could almost hold something in there right like this could if you had something super light this could actually serve as a hook to hold something in your in your journal um this little guy <laughs> and he's adorable i have two sides scrapbook paper maybe it's just not heavy enough but i feel like he's a little pop of color he is not going to hold nothing he is very light and not going to do anything so those are the ones that are doubled over now let's look at um these guys because these seemed really cool they're kind of I'm trying to see which one you'll be able to see the best they're kind of um, they wouldn't hold anything either it depends on how stiff this little part is right and the thinking I think is maybe you could put it this way okay and then hold something underneath it and I'll tell you with one layer of um, one layer of scrapbook paper you are never, it's not going to hold like that. I mean, like, this is so delicate, um, very delicate. But I have two of them. This one is uh, uh, old-fashioned magazine paper on that I glued to a book page. And so now I'm going to um, show you how I just did these together. I mean, it's not anything exciting, but I have, them. I have all the stuff out, so I figured I'd show you. Okay. And so I really am using Mod Podge and getting it on that little flap. And then you're gonna hook these together. And I like the Mod Podge because I can I have a little bit of, of time to scooge it around. Uh-oh. So that didn't work. On this one, there's definitely a front and a back, and I'm fine with this. I have a bajillion of these. There's a front and a back, so I would have to put this. I'll put that under there. And then we'll have an extra layer of Mod Podge. So that could even help it more. Oh, hang on, hang on. We got to get our edge here. Got to get our edge here. All right. 
So this is going to be probably super reinforced because we have magazine paper, we have book paper, we have scrapbook paper, and then we have three layers of Mod Podge. So we're going to just let that guy dry here for a second. All right. So this is, this is how I do the scrapbook paper, and it's so funny because this is the top of a meringue cake that has a little bit of pink on it. And so, and then this is a, like a, a, a ice cream cone. But all I'm really looking for is kind of this pink, um, this pink area or the brown area. It was on the inside of that one. So let's go back and see how to, how to cut these little tabs out. And to do this, you're going to use your sidekick. So we're going to get my junk journal off here. And um, I'm going to have another video about a bajillion ways to make tabs because I'm obsessed with tabs right now. But I saw this, and it was so cheap. I think this little die set um, was like, I don't know. I'm thinking $7. And what it looks like are these. So they're the little dies for the little Sizzix sidekick. And um, I've heard so many people talk about this sidekick and how they like their big shot better. And I have a big shot. And I, I love my big shot, right? But my big shot is huge. So it would take this whole area. I'm cranking. I might be doing a million things at once. And my little work area, honestly, is slightly bigger than this. And so there's, I, I have it in a different room. I would have to go do it. And then it's like a job because I'm doing all of them at once. So I'll stand there for two hours making die cuts where for this, if I'm like, oh, I need a pop of blue or a pop of pink, I can just come right in here and make myself a pop of pink. So there were two that I didn't have a match for. So match, 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 match. So this one and this one, I don't have a match for. So I was going to make those and that's why I thought I'd bring you guys along. So there's going to be a pink one. So I, I have a pink and brown already. So that one's going to be the same on both sides. You know what? I'm actually going to go get a little piece of scrapbook paper because I don't want it to be the same same color on both sides. I want to, I, I want it to be um, two-sided so that I can put different things on it. So I'm going to make this little part um, blue gingham. Very sweet. And then I'm going to make this part, which will have to go this way. But we have this whole, I mean, I think when I saw the sidekick, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to have just this tiny little bit of area to use. But honestly, it's it's really quite, quite easy to do lots of things with it. Okay. And then I need another one to go with this. Right? So we'll try that on a catty corner. But I almost want that to be brown. So we're going to put this guy over the ice cream cone. All right. And then we're going to do a heart, which will make it mismatched. Then I have to make another heart. This is why I wind up making so many, because um, I, uh, I make these. Like, I'm going to run this through with these papers. I might as well run it through full, right? Um, and then this little guy would probably fit over here, kind of sideways. Okay. So the one thing that I always see people stressing about is they're they're acting like putting this putting the stuff through the sidekick is so hard because they don't have a magnetic um, base and you have to go through it and then you have to stick it to the bottom and it's just not that hard, please. I mean, it takes two seconds to run this through as you're doing work. Literally, I can have this done. Um, unstick it to the base and this is just a um, oops we had a little glitch there if you couldn't tell my uh, my house is kind of crazy I have two kids home for the summer and I have three dogs that heavy breathing you here is my one dog my old dog so anyways I was I had to come back in and match this up and when I noticed the uh, video had stopped I thought I would show you this so we're gonna do this again. This may be a tiny little 30 second repeat. Like I said, it takes a second to use the sidekick. And I have 
Another thing about this is people seem to get hung up, and I know Tim Holtz does. He has like a side he uses on his plates and a side he doesn't. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't have a side. I just use whatever kind of happens to come up and then I put the plates right inside, keep them safe. All right, so now I have to find my, okay, so some of them popped right out, right? And these ones have the little piece in them. And this star has the little piece in there. So we have to pull the little piece out, trying to keep you in the sunlight. I live in Florida. You would think it would be all bright and shiny, but it's not because we have big Florida overhangs to keep the, uh, try to keep the houses cool in the summer. And it's in the 90s, so guess I could trade that off. And then sometimes they get stuck in here and I'm using my handy dandy hat pin. I know that there are real, um, real tools for that, but I like, I'm a vintage girl. I like vintage stuff. So let's go ahead and poke this out. And I had finished this whole video and then I realized I forgot to show you the one that we had done together. So I'm excited to show that to you. Um, I'm just gonna glue one of these together. I can't remember which order I did this in. So I know we glued that one together, but all you're gonna do is just take all these guys. And what I've found is if you match the bottom parts first, it makes it a lot easier, right? So the bottom parts are pretty matched up. And then I just smush them and I have Mod Podge all over my hands. My daughter's funny, she loves when I um, make her, I keep my Mod Podge in a little mason jar and uh, she loves when I tell her it's time to clean the Mod Podge jar. So anyway, so you get the idea of how to Mod Podge. I'll finish those up when, when we're done. And now I just wanted to show you the piece de resistance, that floppy old one that wasn't doing anything before that we doubled over. Um, and because it's Mod Podge, of course, Mod Podge is amazing. Um, if we put this in here now with the two, do I even have, oh, I have a little piece of fabric. Let's put a little piece of fabric in there. Now, look at that. Now he can hold it because he's been doubled over. Um, I feel like anytime this back part is very flimsy, I think it's the part that you should put in the back, even though this one would look super cute because it almost has a little, um, I think it's supposed to look like a thought bubble or something. But for these ones, and plus there's so much room, I'm almost thinking I'm going to put a grommet in there. Maybe put a grommet in there. Oh, it's getting bigger. I'm going to put a grommet in there and put hang a little bead on there and see how that looks. So I'm sure you'll see that in my journal walkthrough. But for now, as you can see, these little these little tabs are amazing. I, I just love them. I think, um, you know, when we're looking at the colors... Oh, there's my... I had lost my elephant. Um, but when you're looking at the colors of, of your stuff and wanting just a little, you know, say I want a little tab on the side or I want a little tab on my, um, I'm going to have doors for my elephant, then that would be the perfect little pop of red. And I just add another, another layer, another vintage touch. So hopefully that helps Tara Jacobson, artsy fartsy light.